Hey guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. And today we're talking about one of my favorite categories. We're talking about swim bait fishing for springtime bass. I love swim bait fishing. And we're not talking 2.8 Kitex or 4.3 Kitex. We're talking big baits. I love to throw a swim bait. Swim baits are really how I got my start in bass fishing. I spent uh, 15, 20 years specifically targeting giant bass with giant baits. Uh, now, swim bait fishing has changed a lot in recent years. There are amazing new baits that have come to market that have really shaken things up and changed uh, some of my key staple baits. In fact, some of my favorite baits have come to market just in the last few years. But a swim bait is a major player in the springtime. If you wanna catch the biggest bass of your life, if you wanna see what lives in your lake. Forget catching them, you just wanna see them. A swim bait can show you things that you have never seen in a lifetime of fishing your lake because they draw fish up out of cover. The fish will come out to look at the baits and you can visibly see them following those baits and it will blow your mind what is in your lake. But you have an opportunity this time of year to catch those giant bass. And a swim bait is one of the best baits to do it. Today is not going to be a deep dive into swim bait theory. We actually did a swim bait seminar back in fall that if you wanna take the true deep dive, that's your video. I'll link it in the video description for you. Today, we're not really getting into rods and reels. That's a whole nother animal. I will link you my favorite rods and reels for throwing big baits because rods and reels, line, that stuff is critical. You don't wanna spend the money on giant baits, spend the time learning how to fish them effectively, put all that work and get a giant bite and then lose that fish because your gear wasn't right. You wanna dial it all in so that when you hook the fish of a lifetime on this stuff, you get them. But again, we're not gonna go down that rabbit hole today. It'll just be in the video description below the video. Today, we're just specifically talking about some of my personal confidence baits because I will throw a swim bait as part of my arsenal, not my only thing that I'm throwing, but as part of my arsenal every single day of the spring. I love throwing big baits that much. So I've just broken down some of my key confidence baits here for you, and I'm gonna walk you guys through that. You don't need all these baits, okay? There's a few categories. We've got glide baits, top water, bluegill type baits, and then soft baits. And soft baits are sort of two categories. And I've got some of my key baits from each of those categories sitting here that I wanna show you guys. Uh, but again, you don't need all of them. I'll talk about what they're for and how I like to fish them. And if that jives with your lake, with where you fish, then that bait or that category of baits is really something that you could you should consider. Uh, let's start with soft baits, mainly because we've got an announcement there. We've got uh, some new colors that Tim and I have been working on that I wanna show you. But to kick it off, we'll talk about your boot tail style of soft baits, okay? In the spring, I love throwing these soft baits. You can fish them shallow, you can fish them deep because not all lakes are the same. Some lakes, bass will stage up in 15, 20, 25 feet. We'll be out there fishing creek channel edges and that's the fish moving up. But other lakes, like the lake I'm on today, bass will be right up in the shallow cover. They'll be on laydowns, they'll be underneath docks, they'll be up on boulders. They're up there to ambush their prey. Soft baits can do both of those things extremely well. To kick it off, I've, I've got to start with a mag draft, okay? Because this is one of the main baits that I throw in the spring. The six inch mag draft is by far the most universal of the soft baits. I could throw that bait every single day and I've got confidence to catch big largemouth, big smallmouth, big spotted bass. They all 
eat that thing and you can throw it on regular tackle. You don't even need a dedicated swim bait rod to throw the six inch mag draft. That said, this is the time of year where the eight inch mag draft is the deal. I will always have this thing tied on. In fact, I own multiple rods. Their sole purpose is to throw an eight inch mag draft. That's how much I like that specific bait. My confidence is so high in this bait. Uh, it's remarkable the way it pulls fish and gets them to commit. It truly, it's remarkable. In fact, I will even link, hopefully there's room in the description. If there is, I'll link my dedicated mag draft combo because I throw it that much. But the eight inch is such an overlooked bait. A lot of people are afraid to throw a bigger swim bait. They'll throw a five, a six, a seven inch. But as soon as you get to eight, that's like, it's this line in the sand. But you need to understand that the bigger baits, eight, 10, 12, 14, those baits pull fish from farther. They literally are easier in a lot of situations to get fish to come to an eight or a 10 inch bait than it is to get them to come to a six inch bait. Guys don't realize they're handicapping themselves by throwing the smaller profiles. That one in particular, that eight inch mag draft is just that sweet spot. The last few years, each one of us, our fishing styles are constantly changing. The mag draft was not as big of a player for me three, four, five, six years ago. It wasn't a player for me at all 10 years ago, but it has just continued to take over and take over and take over and has become one of the key baits in my springtime lineup. So the mag draft, I like to fish that bait up in the water column slow rolling that thing. I love skipping docks with it. I love fishing it around the edges of cover, getting those fish to come up and out to get it. Now at the other end of the spectrum, we have this guy, Mike Buka, Bull Shad Baits. He partnered up and started building the Baca Burrito. This bait is remarkable. It's a heavier bait, so I can still fish it in like three to five foot if I'm fast winding it, but I can also fish it in 10, 15, 20, 25 very effectively. Comes in a five inch and a six inch, and you guys are probably extremely familiar with what Tim and I believe is the best color in this bait. That is our tactical shad. It's a combination of like a Tennessee shad and an electric shad, and that has just that has been the color in the burrito. That's the one, whether you're throwing a five inch or a six inch, our confidence is so high in that color. We went to Mike and we worked super hard to develop this color a couple of years ago because it, it was needed. Uh, we needed this color in that bait because the bait was so effective, but we needed that color to take it to the next level. Now, with that said, from day one, Tim and I have known that color's not perfect in every situation, right? Particularly in the springtime. Notice how natural this color really is. It's very ghosty. Now, it's not clear, but it's very ghosty. It gets bit so well, but on a lot of lakes, including the Tennessee River impoundments, where we fish a lot, the springtime, the water tends to be pretty murky. It can even be downright muddy. This color does not shine in those conditions. And we knew that from day one, but we didn't know which direction we wanted to go. We could not settle, so we did both. Two new colors of the burrito. Tactical Chartreuse Shad. At least I think that's what we settled on the name for that one and Tactical Gizzard Shad. Both of them maintain that beautiful electric shad type back, but then very different bellies. So the Gizzard is a much more solid color. It's more of a whitish gold base, and then still has that electric shad type back. So when that water gets murky, they can hone in on this color a lot better in a lot of different situations. It was needed. And then when we get that muddy water, there's just times 
Chartreuse is an incredible color, but it can be so overdone. It's so easy to ruin a bait with too much chartreuse. The balance is almost impossible. We worked the longest on tactical chartreuse shad. So we maintained that electric type back, but then went to like a lemon lime chartreuse type belly, but it is not overbearing at all. This color is bolder than this color, but it's still very bright overall two new colors that pair perfectly in that same family. So we've got the clearest water, that dingier water, and then that dirtier water. And I think those three, the burrito is a magical bait. It's just, it's got it. It being whatever it is, that magic something where some baits just get crushed. It's got it. It gets eaten crazy how good it works it's a silicone bait so super durable of course silicone is a lot more expensive to work with so the price of the baits is higher but they're way more durable than traditional swim baits they're fantastic baits now one more in that category is this guy from jsj the loose caboose we've talked about this bait before in my mind this bait lands halfway between a burrito and a mag draft. Jig hook bait, moderate sink rate, unbelievable swim, and it comes in a seven inch. So a burrito comes in a five and a six, mag draft six, eight, 10. That loose caboose right in the middle, seven inch bait. It's an amazing all around profile, comes in a bunch of fishy colors, but it's designed around like that shiner slash shad type profile. Again, amazing swim. This is also a silicone bait. So a lot more durable than a traditional swim bait. But again, you have to pay for that durability up front. Uh, silicone is just more expensive for these bait makers to work with. Uh, but this is an amazing bait that I smash fish with. Again, I can fish it shallow. I've caught fish shooting up under docks with it, rolling the outsides of cover as well as fishing out in deep water. I've caught them in 30 and 40 foot on that bait. Just depends how fast you wanna wind it. The one other soft bait that I wanna talk about is this Savage Gear. The eight inch RTF. Uh, if I could just have one bait in that wedge tail style category, that has become that bait. And specifically that dirty shad color. It's almost got that electric shad, that same little bit of purple glow in the back. I don't know what it is about that purple glow. It just, it gets me. And more importantly, it gets the fish. I mean, it just catches them. But this bait is much more subtle. You can go way slower, just creep bottom with it. Uh, when the water's super cold, I want that wedge tail. I want to be creeping bottom. Then as that water warms up, you see me switch to those boot tails. Although more and more, I throw boot tails every day. It's amazing how uh, I don't know if my fishing has changed or if we've just unlocked more opportunities with those baits than we previously realized, but we catch them in a lot more situations than we used to. But there is still a time and a place for a wedge tail. That profile is amazing. And if I'm throwing a wedge tail, it's that eight inch Savage Gear eight inch RTF and specifically the fast sink. That's the one. Uh, let's talk bluegill baits really quick. That's sort of its own subcategory. I personally throw bluegill baits less than shad and trout style baits, uh, but they have continued to take up more and more of my time. It continues to be a growing category for me. When you're in Southern fisheries, uh, grass fisheries, places where there are a lot of bluegill crappie panfish, bass mow them down, especially in the spring bass and bluegill war in the spring uh, it's amazing how effective imitating a bluegill can be i've really got like if i had to narrow it down i can i can narrow it down to one soft bait there are a bunch of great soft baits but if i have to narrow it down it's not hard for me it's that savage gear line through bluegill so the line goes through then you tie to that treble hook you can put it on the belly or line through up and put it on the back. You can do either one. 
most often I fish it as a belly rig. It is more stable. Uh, and that's a bait that I can just chuck and whine and just slow roll around the edges of cover. And it, it is a deadly bait. It is unbelievably simple to fish. Throw it out, slow roll it back. Bass just come out and get it. So if I had to narrow it down, it's that easy for me to narrow it down to one bait. Now, if this was a full blown swim bait seminar, there's half a dozen other really good baits, but that one definitely stands out. On the hard bait side of bluegills, I can narrow it down to two. Two baits that are very different. We've got the Jackal Ganterelle, and we've got the Bait Sanity Explorer Gill. This is a glide bait. This is a multi-joint bait. The way they fish is very, very different. The Bait Sanity is that traditional glide bait. You can get really twitchy and darty with it, really, really aggressive, snap that rod tip, get it to dart. It's a very, very effective swim bait. It's also very affordable. Something you will notice with all of the baits that I choose. None of these are crazy expensive custom baits. None of them are hard to get. When Tim and I are testing baits, when we're looking for those gems, we want baits that are available, that people can get their hands on and they will catch fish. Affordability is even better. So. That Bait Sanity is an unbelievably affordable bait. Its action is amazing. I mean amazing. It is a fish catcher. On the other end of the spectrum, we've got that Jackal Ganterelle, where the glide bait, we slow roll it, and then I use two twitches. When you twitch it, that bait will cut and dart, and that's when those fish lash out and eat that thing. The Ganterelle is the exact opposite. The Ganterelle is more subtle. I slow roll it, and then instead of twitching it and working it, all I do is just pause and kind of lean into it. So that bait will be swimming, almost like a glide bait, and then when I stall, it just wanders off. It's got this cool little glide out that it will do. And then I bring it back, and I continue the slow roll and then glide out. Complete opposite. So one twitches and darts, the other one just fades away. Both actions can be deadly. That's why I have both in the lineup. Both are worth a look. If you fish bluegill baits, if you fish ponds, if you fish grass lakes, if you fish southern fisheries, northern fisheries too, obviously, uh, but early season, those southern lakes are firing on bluegill a lot sooner. But both of those baits are amazing. Uh, and we've caught giant fish on them. They just plain work. One thing I'll say about the Ganterelle, they make the Ganterelle and the Ganterelle Junior. I like that main Ganterelle size the best, and it's because I catch so many fish on it, I don't really see the need for the Junior personally. Uh, my confidence is so high, it's not like I think I'm leaving fish on the table that the Junior will catch. The Ganterelle catches all of them. Uh, so just keep that in mind too. Uh, so we've got soft baits are done, bluegill baits are done, we've just got a few more. Wake bait top water specifically one bait uh, this is the bait that tim and i designed uh, i don't like to talk about just one bait in a category the reason i want to talk about this bait specifically is because it is so different uh, we partnered up with river to sea to build the tactical 210 wake that's this bait right here this thing catches them we designed it hopefully you've already heard all this we designed it to do some very different things. Uh, you can fish it slower than any other wake bait I've ever fished, where it will just barely crawl on the surface. Uh, but we can also work it like a traditional wake, throw it out and wind it. That bait will be clacking. It's got this super unique clack. It's that perfect tone, pushes a beautiful V wake. We set this bait up where it fishes very flat in the water so the bill does not block the hook. It's not like it's diving nose down like a lot of wake baits do where that bill is in the way when a fish tries to hit. Fish is very, very flat in the water so those hooks are always right there when the fish hit it. That tail will stick up and just snake along throwing its own little mini wake. It's deadly. And then you can also walk this bait in place where you get that super loud clack. I like to do that when there's wave action on the lake. 
when those waves are going, there's a lot of chop on the water, that hard walk can pull those fish. But this wake bait is remarkable. We worked on it for years to dial it in and to get it to do all of these different things. It is such a deadly bait. And over the last year, we've seen that momentum just exploding on this bait. More and more giant fish being caught, more guys giving it a try. Everyone who gives it a try loves it. I mean, the amount of giant fish we get DM'd to us is awesome. That's why we built it. That's why we went with such a large profile. We wanted to force the angler's hand, your hand, to throw a slightly larger bait than you're comfortable with. We knew we could build a smaller wake bait and more guys would be willing to try it, but we forced your hand to the larger size because we've done this for so many years that we know that this is the critical size cutoff here and bigger is what those true freaks of nature react to. It's very rare that they eat a smaller wake. There's just this magical line where you get bigger than that and all of a sudden the monsters will eat it. We wanted to force the angler's hand just a little bit to a bait they were slightly uncomfortable to throw because we knew that your odds of catching a true double digit go way, way, way up if we do that. So we did that intentionally. That said, I still catch tons of two and three and four pounders on this bait. It's no problem at all. But this bait, the wake bait bite specifically on any bait starts way sooner than anglers realize. Uh, I have thrown wake baits all the way through the winter. For years, you get very few bites, but some of them are giant bites. As time goes on, I get lazier. Now I, I tend to wait until late February, early March before I start adding that back in. But I used to throw it all the way through. I mean, water in the, earth, in the low 40s, pulling fish up to the surface out in deep water just by dead sticking those baits. But come March, that bite is wide open. You can catch monsters on that thing when no one else is throwing it. Last but not least, that brings us to glide baits. Uh, the glide bait category is forever changing. There are new baits coming to market, there are old baits falling away, uh, and some of the new baits are amazing. The standby for me continues to be that River to Sea S Waver 168. This color in particular, we've done so much damage with this over the last year. Uh, this is a tackle warehouse exclusive color that's the only place you can get it but it i mean here on the tennessee river i catch so many giants on this thing it's ridiculous and again we'll link the specific colors and everything in the video description but the s waiver 168 is a tiny glide bait it's a cover glide fish it right up tight to cover twitch it be super aggressive with it it pulls fish that would otherwise eat a jerk bait but it also pulls giant fish it, it just it, i don't know what it is about this particular bait. It's way smaller than what I throw in the other categories, but I just have so much confidence in that particular bait to convert big ones. That said, two newer baits in the category that have come out over the last couple of years uh, that are just so deadly. They have to be talked about. You got the Spro Chad Shad, and then you've got the Bait Sanity Chimera Shad. Both of these baits, shad profiles, but very, very different. Uh, this one is much smaller. I fish this bait uh, with more of a smoother, I mean, I twitch and work them all, but the Chimera Shad is the one I get the most aggressive with. The Chad Shad is a deadly, deadly bait. Uh, when they partnered up with Spro to build this bait, they took it to a whole nother level. Uh, they became widely available. People can get them, they're affordable, and they are just plain fish catchers. And then that Chimera Shad, Bait Sanity and Tackle Warehouse partnered up and designed that bait together. So again, that's a Tackle Warehouse exclusive bait, but it's crazy how good it works. I've caught so many fish on it, both largemouth and mega striper. I've caught giants on this thing. It is such a fun bait. On a straight retrieve, it's so aggressive. It's not even funny, just bah, 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 coming through the water. But you can also chop that bait as it's, it's just 
Super effective bait. Both of those are deadly. I cannot pick a favorite. They're different and I throw both a ton. And with that, we're gonna wrap it up. Uh, I love throwing big baits. Obviously, we're kind of skipping over that entire trout kokanee category this time around. There are less baits in that category, uh, but less of the country throws those profiles. Shad profiles and bluegill profiles represent the bulk of the country, and there are key baits that we throw in those categories that we have so much confidence in. Uh, so I just wanted to convey that to you early enough in the season that you can get this stuff right now and go straight to work with it and start catching fish right now. We didn't want this information to be delayed or if you tried to buy a bait and it took a week and a half to get it, you know, or maybe one was back ordered and you had to wait a couple weeks for it, then you have to wait for your day off. By then that bite's fading on you. We wanna get you this information now because if you get those baits and you go out there and try it, it will work right now and it will continue to work for an extended period here. You've got a great window of opportunity to catch a truly giant fish on a swim bait. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.